This is Echo 3, and let's discuss a breaking ground hack. I've seen others use a variation on this hack, but I'm going to take it a little further. We're going to make a rocket that never runs out of fuel and has a ludicrous thrust to weight ratio. But this is not a crack and drive. Our build starts off normal with a pod and a fuel tank, but this is where normal ends. And for the magic of this ship, we need the Cal 1000 and a rotor. Any of the rotors will work for this, I just used a small one because I clicked on it first. Now we need an engine. I'm using the Aerospike because its performance remains pretty consistent at sea level and in a vacuum. This will work with other engines. I'm going to place this one upside down so that the shroud will be able to cover the Cal 1000. For now though, we'll need access to the Cal, so I'll leave the shroud off. We need to bind the Cal controller to the craft's main throttle. To make this design work, we need to bind the rotor's RPMs to the Cal 1000. We will also need to bind the Aerospike's throttle and thrust to the Cal controller. You need to pay attention to how I set up the Cal. The rotor is key to making all this work. I set the rotor RPMs to go from 0 at uh, the beginning to 460 at the end, that, that's five, six, uh, 5 seconds there. I then copy and paste those values over to the Aerospike's throttle. This means that the engine will throttle to 460% of its normal value. Next, we need to set the rotor's RPMs to say consistent at 460 throughout the play position. Then we'll copy and paste these over to the Aerospike's thrust. Uh, but after we paste them, we also need to click on the button to vertically flip these values. So instead of the thrust being set at 460%, it will flip those numbers to minus 360%. When the thrust is a negative number, the engine will actually create fuel instead of burn it. For the last part of the magic, we need to place uh, one more aerospike. This one we'll place normally. We bind its thrust and throttle to the cal controller. And again, we will use the rotor to copy and paste the values to the engine. I'm going to use a modest 300 for the thrust and copy and paste it to the second engine. Uh, this time, we do not flip the values. Then we can copy the 0 to 460 values from the first engine and paste it over to the second. Uh, so both engines will have the ability to throttle to 460% and our lower engine will, uh, sorry, it will uh, have a 300% thrust of normal, which also means it will use 300% more fuel, but the negative number will offset that and give us uh, minus 360 percent so it'll actually create fuel faster than it uses fuel anyway we don't have to worry about fuel on this craft <coughs> we can look at our two engines as we move the cow slider to make sure that our values are set correctly then we can remove the rotor and set the engines to be controlled independently instead of by the main throttle the main throttle will actually be handled by the cow and then the engines will be controlled by the cow 1000 so the throttle will still end up affecting everything. It's just, it's gonna work better this way. Uh, to finish off the craft, we can add a small reaction wheel and a nose cone. Then we can put the shroud back over the first aerospike and add a few landing legs. This craft is, I think, ready to test. <laughs> this, this is gonna be ludicrous. This is gonna be ridiculous what this craft can do. I have actually tested it out before. Uh, I'm gonna pull up the cheat menu for you. Uh, if you have any doubt of the cheats being able, they are not. There is no infinite fuel cheat, no infinite electricity cheat, so you can watch what this craft can do. The thrust on this craft is ridiculous. We have to keep the throttle pretty low as we ascend through the atmosphere, otherwise we're just going to burn up the entire craft. Although once we're in space, we can just let this thing go crazy. Uh, if I throttle up, the, you'll just watch the velocity meter down there just jump by thousands of meters per second. <laughs> so this is this is really fun actually uh, I was testing this craft out earlier and I took it to EVE I had no problems landing and getting back into orbit then I took it back to Kerbin it actually only took me about a week of in-game time to go from the surface of EVE back to landing at the Kerbal Space Center uh, the two planets were pretty close at the time but that still is insanely fast well hey thanks for joining me to discuss this breaking ground hack